Hi, I'm Clark Dennis Cundiff, and I am the pastor of Bay Lake United Methodist Church at 4300 Shore Drive in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and Merry Christmas, and soon to be Happy New Year on this December the 26th. Uh, thank you, Lord, there this year, even amidst the rising numbers of Omicron, we are able to gather with family, uh, both sides of our family, that we did not do last year, and Lord, we pray. <laughs> for protection for all of us from those uh, joining in fellowship that we had, that none of us will come down with uh, COVID, uh, but pray your presence in all of it, Lord. So coming to you this this December the 26th as we kind of <clears throat> end the 2021, as we look forward to 2022, and even as we, we think about the heart growing three sizes, our Advent scene of the Grinch, how he had this transformation because uh, today we're, we're looking at a message from Colossians, which I love the way the Colossians puts it. It says, as God's chosen ones, this is Colossians 3, verse 12, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Because we're looking to touch people's hearts in 2022 and it seems like the the last month or so of 2021 was leading us that direction as well how do we touch hearts and we studied the Grinch and his heart grew three sizes and how do we grow into the person God calls us to be to have lived this amazing adventure called being a disciple of Jesus Christ to the great highs and the great sadnesses too often but clothe yourselves right compassion this is a consciousness of others' distresses combined with a desire to alleviate it. Compassion, compassion. Being compassionate, having or showing compassion, sympathetic. Putting yourself in the other person's shoes or viewpoint. Seeking to understand, listen. One of the greatest gifts we can give each other is to totally listen to another. Well, are we willing to take the time, the energy, to totally listen? To someone else to see it as best we can from their point of view even though we will never be able to see it exactly as they see it but if we actively listen and share back with the person what we heard them say and they'll keep giving us that feedback till we get it right and they'll go yes that's putting other people's interest and concerns ahead of our own to listen right compassion is that basis of all truthful relationships <coughs> Being present with love, right? Kindness. You know, I love the book, The Random Acts of Kindness. It's always wonderful to review that, just to remind me, oh, there's opportunities every day to just random acts of kindness. Act of being sympathetic, forbearing, pleasant nature. The opposite is anger, right? Drive back the darkness a little by being kind. Humility. Count others better than yourself. But it's based on that sense of a proper sense of your own self-worth. It's not weakness of character. We are beloved children of God of immense worth and value. But we can be humble. Nobody knows everything about anything, right? Everything I say is, well, I think, or to the best of my knowledge, I, this is how I understand it. But as I'm open to information, that is constantly changing as my mass of information is more and more. So the more I know, the more I know I don't know. Humility, right? Meekness, gentleness, courtesy, considerateness, a willingness to waive one's rights than to be concerned for personal gain in one's relationship with others. Meek, it's not a weakness, right? Pastor Rick Warren says, we've lost the true meaning of meekness. Meek doesn't mean weak. Jesus and Moses were described as meek. <clears throat> and they certainly were anything but weak. Meekness really means strength under control. Then patience. <laughs> you pray for more patience and God gives you plenty of ways to learn more patience, right? Ability to not become frustrated and enraged. <laughs> but to make allowances for the fact the rest of the world doesn't know how to drive. Yes, Lord. And in Colossians 3.13, it says, Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as I, the Lord, have forgiven you. So you also must forgive. I love that, that 
discovery and the, how the Grinch stole Christmas. Yes, the point of the book is Christmas doesn't come in packages and boxes and bags. It means more. The true meaning of Christmas, celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. So it does have that lesson. But the other lesson that I didn't fail to pick up maybe before is the forgiveness of the Grinch by the Who's. Not only did they know the true meaning of Christmas, it wasn't tied up in all the things he had taken, but they forgave him. Not only forgave him, they reconciled with him, gave him that place of honor. And the Grinch carved the roast beef. Verse 14 of Colossians 3 says, Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Isn't it all about love? Remember that unconditional love that God loves us first and foremost, no matter what, no matter where we are, no matter what we do. There's nothing, remember the, the, the scripture, nothing can stand in the way of God's love. As Paul tells us, no matter what, God loves us. The sacrifice of one's own interest out of concern for the welfare of others is a quality above all that's necessary in our fellowship together, right? Love is the binding agent of community, the super glue in church, church unity. Love is a resource that allows the concerns of another to weigh more heavenly than one's own desire for self-fulfillment and to reach out toward one another with no expectation of reward. God's love for each of us, that unconditional love, forms our ability to love and forgive others, right? Just as we are forgiven, we forgive others, and the who's did an amazing job of that, and that led to that reconciliation. But love really binds it all together, right? And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you indeed were called in the one body, and be thankful, Colossians 3, 15. And it toward peace, and the Grinch stole Christmas, and the book by Matt Ryle, The Heart That Grew Three Sizes, he talks about all this leads toward that peace and the joy, right? Peace, hope, love, joy. Just as between them and the Grinch, that reconciliation that led to an amazing joy at the end. Let the word of Christ dwell, dwell richly in you. Dwell in, dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish you. Admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your heart. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. I am so grateful, Lord, for all the blessings you give me each and every day. And that greatest gift is your son, Jesus, whose celebration of birth we're in that season now of Christmas, that you loved us so much. You sent your son to, be, to live on this earth, fully human, fully divine, to experience our emotions, Tears, sadness, laughter, fun, <laughs> pain and suffering on the cross so that we are forgiven of our sins. Dying and then being raised from the dead that we know we have that gift of eternal life. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him, Colossians 3, 17. It's beautiful, isn't it? The divinely inspired word of God. Because we are all beloved children. God shows love through the gift of Jesus that he gave us. Compassion is the basis of all truthful relationship. It means being present with love for ourselves and for all life. God forgives our sins when we ask. And that forgiveness fuels the generosity required for us to be able to forgive others and to forgive yourself. Remember, each time we ask, God forgives us. We may ask multiple times for the same thing, but, but God forgave us the first time we asked. And love, sacrifice of one's own interest out of concern for the welfare of others. As we put on this Christian wardrobe, if you will, then we can continue to love and forgive and support one another. I know, I've told you before, I love the Hallmark movies. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, and, and I'm always, you know, you always teary at the end, but it's tears of joy, isn't it? It's tears of joy. Whether it's the sound of music or the miracle on 31st Street or how the Grinch stole Christmas, it always brings to my mind tears at the end, doesn't it? <clears throat> but it's tears of joy. But it's also tears for what could be. I am crying for what could be the possibilities of a great, wonderful ending in all cases. I believe my cup is full and overflowing. I believe the best always. At least I try to, Lord. 
I'm crying for the potential, the potential in myself, the potential in others. We all know of these great stories of forgiveness and wonderful endings, but we also know of those that are not so wonderful. Where a son does not speak to his father, a sister never talks to her brother, a coworker avoids a, ch a colleague over some old issue. So I cry for what could be, and I hold on to the hope of that possibility to happen. I believe. I keep that, all those things in my office. I have I believe statements all over my office. I believe, help my unbelief, the Mark 9 scripture. I believe in the power of forgiveness and the power of love. I keep Tinkerbell, a little bell on my desk to remind me the power of love. I do like the Hook movie. So that's the potential. Clothe yourselves in love. Live into that potential. May God bless you as we close out this 2021 and have a merry, hope you had a merry Christmas and hope you have a wonderful, happy new year as we look to touch hearts even more, to grow hearts even bigger and bigger in 2022. Hope you'll join us. Uh, today we're just doing the one service at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube, uh, but back again on the second will be our service at nine uh, with our more contemporary music and 35 minute service and our service at 11, 45 minute service that includes some hymns and uh, and communion, we do serve communion after the first service also. May God bless you and keep you as make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Take care. God bless.